So what I wanted to explain was how this differs from previous uh, differential equations libraries and how this looks to try to advance the science. So the first, I just want to describe what the problem is. Right? So differential equations are the basis of scientific simulations. If you have any type of scientific phenomena, the, the scientific laws describe how things change in time. And those correspond to differential equations, which have to be integrated. So all of your climate models, all of your uh, astrodynamics models, all these kinds of things are differential equations. And so research requires that we have these well-tested results. right? So we need to know that the results that we're getting out of these simulations are correct. But the way that we generally build our software doesn't tend to be like that, right? We tend to get this monster software from our lab, and we add little bits and pieces to it. And you know, there's this giant Fortran code that goes around that's passed down to, through centuries that really nobody knows how it works, and it's not really well tested. And so what I wanted to try to, try to do was try to recreate from the ground up a new simulation engine that can handle the types of problems that we're encountering in today's science. Because as science gets more and more complex, our programs are getting more and more complex, and we need more and more well complex. We need more difficult algorithms to be able to actually solve our more difficult problems. So this is why I call a simulation engine. So these things like MATLAB and SciPy, they have these general, uh, they have these really general ODE solvers, right? These are things where you you give it an array, it integrates over time to solve what the equation is in the future, and then it outputs that value. The problem with that is not all of our scientific problems these days can just be represented as just a f as one array of differential equations, or just one set of differential equations. Like to give you an example, a lot of things that we're trying to model are, let's say you have a cell, and the cell divides. And now these, the cells are now signaling to each other to cause more divisions. Right? What are, the things that we're trying to simulate are dynamic and changing. And not only changing in amounts, but they're also changing in the size of equations that we have to solve. And these are not things that we could do with the original softwares. So these days, people tend to go to like these DL2 and PET C, these ancient Fortran, uh, uh, these ancient Fortran codes where everyone is learning C++ and Fortran, just a little tiny bit to be able to use these really difficult libraries. But instead, what you can do is you can build something different. What you can do is you can use one of, uh, a new language called Julia to essentially make it so that way your low-level components will recompile into new types of software whenever you need them. And that's generally what we're, what we're doing with this simulation engine called differentialequations.jl. I think it's best to th is describe how it's doing this by looking at a few examples. So the quickest why Julia ever, I'm not going to explain the full why exactly to use Julia, because I'll be giving a workshop with the Data Science Initiative in about a month. So sign up for that if you're interested. Um, but the idea is that you can get native uh, Julia codes to run at C or Fortran speeds by ha letting the compiler do all the work. So um, the general idea is that you can write a code that is abstract on the types. And the moment the, the moment the compiler sees what the types are, it will compile a completely new different program. And I'm going to show you right now exactly how you can use that to your advantage to solve all, all sorts of scientific problems. Um, and so the main idea is that we're able to solve a vast array of differential equations, so not just ordinary differential equations, but when you add you know, stochastic differential equations or differential equations where you describe how things are changing over time, but you add some randomness. Or delay differential equations where um, you, ha you just solve how things are changing over time, but you're allowed to have your changes uh, rely on something from the past. So an example of that is signaling in, in uh, biochemical networks where the amount that you are reading a signal from another cell depends on how much protein is bound to your DNA a while ago, because it takes a while for the DNA to actually transcribe something. So these are things that we're able to do now in, in this new software that makes it so that way we can build our more complicated scientific models directly from these programs instead of having to start from scratch every single time. So this is what it ends up actually looking like if you depicted what the software organization looks like. So it is actually, I think it's around, this was when it was about 25 packages in Julia. Now it's around 40 packages with, with about 30 contributors. Um, and here's an example, right? So we have one cell. So let's say we have one cell we, where we model with a protein concentration that increases linearly. And whenever it hits one, we'll let it divide. And we ask the question, OK, uh, let's just model this, where we now let the cell divide, and then it, it grows in the amount of uh, uh, protein that it's having. 
And then each time it hits one, we want to keep on dividing. This is something that you really can't do in most pre-built differential equation solvers, but you can do it in about 30 lines of code now, which means that you can focus less on trying to build the actual underlying logic and more just building what the model is. Where the, uh, the entire idea is that you can just define a differential equation plus conditions and, effect, and effects. So you can just basically say, you know, here's my differential equation, but whenever something like this happens, I'm allowed to do, you know, do any programmatic change to what's happening there. Um, but I think one of the key ideas is multi-scale arrays. So one, of, one thing that a lot of biological models have been going towards these days is multi-scale models. So you, what you really want to model is you want to model cells uh, that are in populations. And these population of cells form a tissue. And all these tissues together form a whole embryo. And you want to model from top all the way down. Now, you would think that you can't just throw that into a differential equation solver. And generally, you can't. But the, gen the generic typing structure of this, of this language allows it such that we can build things like this multi-scale model, where we can say each cell has a group of proteins. And we can build a linear index all the way through the, entire, the entirety of the model. And then the program will automatically recreate a new version of itself such that it counts this as the scalar array such, uh, that it's actually working on. And then this means that entire multi-scale models can be simulated inside of you know, an out-of-the-box software. So the current status of, of Julia Diffie-Q and differential equations.jl is that we have a large and growing uh, uh, user base. So we have, I said, 50 contributors. I, just, I checked that last night. Um, and even though it's less than a year old, it were uh, ranked 14th in the star count for the Julia language. And we're getting about 30 new users uh, downloading per day. So we're getting a lot of, a lot of users uh, that are starting to use this. And I do want to end with one little note that um, a lot of you probably do only academic research and never looked at the open source software side of things. I do want to make, uh, do want to note that a lot of academics do not see software development as a research endeavor, and software development is overused and underfunded. So um, what I would like to make note is, as something that I've experienced through all this is that a lot of people in academia, you're all using these open source softwares. You know, you probably use it. You probably use thousands of open source softwares each day. But what you probably don't know is that most of, the, most of those softwares that you're using, like well, a lot of them like IPython and SageMath and these kinds of things, are actually built on the backs of someone's academic career, but no academic credit is ever given for these things. So I want you, you know, given now that you know that information, I hope that you all go out there and try to bring, make software sustainability in the development of open source software something that's more central to your own research. Look at the software that you're, uh, that you're using and see if you can contribute to it. So thank you.